Hello there, I'm Adam and it's been a few weeks but I am back and in today's video we're talking about quite a few things. We're going to look at does photography have any value, we're going to talk about NFTs a little bit and give you some tips on how you can start selling your prints, making a little bit of money, how to price yourself, that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, come with me. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website or an online store, then make your next move with Squarespace. So yeah, it's been a funny couple of weeks. I've been ill, I've been doing workshops, I've been finalizing the book, lots of things going on, but I just haven't had much time to create content. So this video is gonna be a little bit more raw, a bit less produced, but I have been thinking about making a few more things like that where I can just talk to you about what I've been working, what I've been thinking about, and just generally about photography, those things that might get us excited. Now, over this period, I've been, or over the last few months, I've been delving into the world of NFTs. Hopefully it's something you've heard of. It's complicated initially to get your head around, but what it is is essentially a digital token, a non-fungible token, which means it can't be recreated. It's unique. And it's just a way of showing authenticity and uniqueness and originality in the digital space. And that's something that I think we've needed. You have artists like Beeple who have sold their digital images, their digital artwork as an NFT and made a huge amount of money. I've been looking at and thinking about how that can work for photographers because it sits on blockchain technology, which is linked to crypto country, but we're not bothered about cryptocurrency at all. It's more about the blockchain technology, this originality of artwork, and anyone that's ever had one of their digital images used and reproduced, it's quite frustrating and it's difficult to show that you were the original owner sometimes, but an NFT could do that. And it could also generate income for photographers further down the line. I'm not going to go into it too deeply, but what that got me thinking about was at the moment, people are selling off all sorts of absolute nonsense and as NFTs, and it's like a bubble that's going to burst. The thing is, is that the item that's being bought, the NFT, has to have genuine value in the first place for it to matter. And I think that's where Beeple's work did well, because it's just amazing artwork, and you become the owner of that in the digital space. So it's about transferring value from the real world, I guess, into the digital world. And if you've ever, if you've got children that buy things in gaming, that'll give you an idea of how digital currency is becoming a thing. But I think it's interesting for photographers about how we can possibly use that to, A, to copyright our work, and B, to potentially generate a little bit of money. But the work has to have intrinsic value in the first place. And that got me thinking, well, does photography have value anymore? It certainly used to, but because everybody's taking pictures now, it's something people say quite often that photography doesn't have value. Because for something to have value, it, it generally works by us all agreeing that something has value. Uh, say, take a famous piece of artwork. We all might agree that that's very valuable. In reality, it's just a bit of canvas paint and a wooden frame, isn't it? Which, I don't know, in today's world might cost 10 pounds. But the value is in that work, isn't it? And that's, we all agree that that's, is, that's really valuable. But it's also scarcity. And that's the challenge with photography, is that it isn't scarce anymore. Because everybody's taking photographs. The scarcity has just gone down so much. The scarcity of having someone able to take those pictures as well. There's loads of people that can take photographs these days. So it's becoming more and more competitive. But I think photography still does have value. And there is still potential for photographers to make money. But it's a funny little thing because if you think about wedding photography, there's still a reasonable amount of money, if we ignore the pandemic, to be made in wedding photography. So a thousand pounds a day is a rough estimate of how much I might charge. One day for the shoot, one day for the edit, and you've got about two thousand pounds. So that service is valuable. However, the pictures that you deliver 
with wedding photography, with all wedding photography, I don't actually think those photographs have barely any value at all because who actually wants to look at a wedding photograph other than the people in it? And I think that's, so you see kind of how the service might be valuable, but the actual product may not be. That on the landscape photography side, it's almost like the opposite in that the service and the actual taking of the photograph, you very, very rarely get paid for that unless you are on a commission or doing some commercial work, which again is, is becoming harder to get. But then the actual product at the end of it potentially does, has, does have some value, whether you print it and then sell it. And especially when you print it out as well and you get it in your hand and it becomes something physical, it then genuinely has some value. Even if it's just a few pounds for the product and the frame, there is still some value there. But then if you build a little bit of attention around yourself and people get interested in your work, then the price of that can start to edge up. I've also realized that there is value in the images that I have placed into to my book, which I've been working on, because as I collate them all into that book and sell that book, they add value to that book. They may, I think they make that book better. And it, it becomes something that people hopefully want to buy, along with the stories I've been telling about my time in the police and how I transitioned to be a full-time photographer and the philosophy that, that all those funny, weird and dangerous and scary things I saw affect me now. So it's a whole mixture of things. So my experience becomes hopefully something valuable, mixed in with the images I've taken, put them into a book to create a product and then sell it to you. So it's, it's the whole thing comes together to add value. And I think that's how maybe as landscape photographers we need to see it, is that we're creating a story that hopefully people will want. Now I was out with a client the other day and he has been printing his work for quite a while, which is brilliant. And he's also got quite a lot of interest in his work, but he's been giving the images to people for free. He's doing that maybe because he is lacking a little bit of confidence in his own work. Now he did agree with that, but the thing is, is that people like his work and they're actually putting it on their wall. So what I encouraged him to do was just to start trying to make a little bit of money from it. Even if you don't know where to price yourself, if you've been giving it away for free, just start small, like 50 pounds for a print, an A3 print. And what you might find is that when people pay you 50 pounds, for a print, even though that's not much, you're not gonna make a load of money from that, they actually feel like they're getting something more valuable because they've paid a little bit of money for it. And that will it'll probably make them feel even better about it when they put it on their wall, knowing they've paid a little bit of money for artwork that's now sitting on their wall. And then if you sell a few for that small amount of money, then you can start edging it up and edging it up and edging it up until you find a point where people aren't gonna buy it anymore because the price is too high. Like with any product, it's about trying to find the spot where you don't feel like you're undervaluing yourself or your product, but people will still buy it. And that's the difficult part. And it's really just through a little bit of experimentation that we can start to figure that out. It is, it's never gonna be easy, but a good way to do it is to start with a website. And this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now Squarespace is just the easiest place for any photographer to create their website by putting your images on there into the beautiful templates they've got. With a few of your words, you'll then have a really unique website, a great place to show your images off in, in good resolution. If you then want to have a commerce store to start selling your prints directly through the website, you can easily upgrade it. And it's just a great place to sell, really easy to do as well. Give Squarespace a try. You get a free trial, go to squarespace.com to start that free trial today. And then if you like what you've put together, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. But I also think if we want photography to have value as photographers, then we actually need to value it ourselves. We need to value other people's work and even potentially support other photographers by buying their work, but then also to 
value our own work, which I think sometimes is difficult because we're a bit nervous to put our work out there. And I totally get that. I still feel that now. But we need to value our own work in order to get other people to think it has value as well. And when we're crafting these images, we're going out, traveling all over the place. It's hard work. We're out early, we're out late, waiting to capture those beautiful moments in all different types of weather. It's really difficult. So when we do get that landscape photograph that we're really happy with, that has that wow factor or that impressive artistic look, the amount of work that goes into that is just staggering. And that intrinsically creates value. And if it's a beautiful picture that we can then print out into something physical, it does, it does have value. And hopefully, if people are paying attention to your work, someone will want to buy it. It's never going to blow up, is it? Because we don't have that scarcity anymore. But we should see the value in it. And the value goes beyond even anything to do with money. The experience was valuable. Being out there in nature, on your own, a bit of solitude, time to think, time to reflect, getting that physical exercise, the boost to the mental well-being is all part of that value proposition of doing landscape photography. And that's certainly probably the primary thing for me, especially why I started. And then secondary, if you can make a bit of money on the side because you've created something valuable, then that's the best for best thing for it. I really recommend that you look into NFTs. At the moment, there's talk about it not being very environmentally friendly. That's up for debate because there's a lot of renewable energy being used to create that. It's also going to move to what's called proof of stake, which is doesn't use nearly as much energy, so it's actually pretty sustainable. Uh, but it's an interesting space. I think you should look into it and have a think about how that might work for photographers. Anyway, I just sort of wanted to get some thoughts off the top of my head. Not had much time to plan or create content at the moment, but I wanted to check in with you, share some of the things I've been thinking about. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you on another one very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography. Out.